Sean, to understand the concept of events within quantum mechanics and general relativity, time is a natural component of it. How has uh, this understanding of events in the context of, of uh, quantum mechanics and, and general relativity affected our different understandings of the nature of time? I think the relativity and quantum mechanics just start off on very different feet uh, when it comes to time and events. The great advance of relativity from Einstein and Minkowski and others was to put space and time on more or less an equal footing. And in fact, we learned that what you called space and time might not be what I call space and time, right? Different people have different ways of dividing up the universe. Quantum mechanics, when you sort of take it seriously at face value, treat space and time very differently. If you look at Schrodinger's equation for quantum mechanics. Evolves over time. Yeah. And it, well, yeah, and it's, it's a very general form. It works just as well for quantum field theories and relativistic things and quantum gravity. And there's a T in there for time. There's no X in there for space. They're just treated very differently. So there's different ways you can go. You can sort of try to say, well, Schrodinger's equation isn't quite right. We need to do, do something different for gravity. Uh, or you can say that, no, actually, at the deepest level of uh, physics, time is something special and fundamental. And this appearance of relativity in our world, that time and space are kind of on an equal footing, that's just an approximation useful to our regime mm -hmm. that might break down somewhere else. And, 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 the, uh, and in that formulation, time would be more fundamental than space. Exactly. I think that uh, I so would that's say... that's a radical idea yes, today. I would say um, I would be very happy to support the proposition that time is either as or more fundamental <laughs> than space. So I don't think space is fundamental at all. I mean, in my personal view, I think it's crystal clear. Space is not fundamental as an emergent approximation. Time, I'm not sure. I can see it going either way. It very, very well might be fundamental, or it might be something that is sort of something we extract from the quantum wave function. Certainly the crowd of physicists that uh, I've been uh, hanging out with in the last uh, decade or so uh, have been moving aggressively that time is, um, is d derivative right. or uh, an illusion. Uh, 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 and, and that's more and more going that way. And in the today's world, people gravitate together when they have similar views. So maybe that's part of my problem. Uh, but but you're kind of an well, exception. Well, yeah, I even this. I definitely agree with your reading of the room <laughs> that time seems to be becoming less fundamental. So I even wrote a paper with the title, "What if time really exists?" And it was kind of a joke, right? Yeah. Because obviously time exists, but we're we have so many people coming out and saying maybe it's an illusion. I think there's zero question whether time exists. Of course, time exists. The right. question is, is it emergent or fundamental, yes, right? Yes, is it, of course, of is course. it uh, irreducible or is it something that's just like a useful thing to well, use? Well, you know, we some people really world. go extreme and say it really is an illusion. They do. So, well, so. I, but I think that that's just a linguistic mistake. I think that they say that it really is a uh, unnecessary way of talking about the world. That's what they should be saying. It's, it's, I would say the same thing for consciousness, right? I'm a physicalist. I think that I'm made of electrons and protons and neutrons bumping together. I don't think there's anything other than the physical stuff that's making me up. I don't think that makes mm. my consciousness an illusion. It makes it a useful, emergent way of talking about who I am. Okay, that's a whole other conversation that, that we'll, <laughs> I'd love to have, and maybe we will. Uh, but they say it's a, an illusion. You say they're, they're saying Saying it's an illusion is a linguistic, uh, a semantical issue. It's a flourish. I would just say it's non-fundamental or it's emergent, yes. Okay. Uh, and what are the implications either way? I think there's a lot of implications. Uh, well, especially if time is real and fundamental, if it's, if it's built into the Schrodinger equation like it naively is, there's a very strong immediate implication, namely that the universe is eternal. It goes from minus infinity mm -hmm. to infinity. Mm -hmm. There's no on-off switch on the Schrodinger equation. Mm. It says you have the universe at one moment in time, it's going to evolve it forward and backward. In that sense, quantum mechanics is again simpler than classical mechanics because in general relativity, a classical theory, space and time can come to an end at mm. a singularity. Mm -hmm. In quantum mechanics, no. It just goes on forever. So that's really a very significant difference. That's right. If you want a finite universe in time, you want time to be emergent, not fundamental. Mm. And if time's not fundamental? Well, quantum mechanics, right, is a story of superpositions. An electron can be in a superposition of spinning clockwise or counterclockwise. So imagine your classical universe that exists at, you know, this moment of time, that moment of time, this moment of time. Imagine there was a quantum state for this moment, that moment, that moment. 
Quantum mechanics says that even without time existing, I could make a superposition yeah, yeah. of what it looked like then, what it looked like then, what it looked like then. What that means is that at the deepest level, there is no time evolution. There's no change over time. What there is is a superposition of different ways of talking about the universe, each one of which looks like the universe at one moment of time, including a bunch of clocks that say what time it is. So operationally, when you say what time is it, what you're saying is how does the current state of my wave function correlate with the quantum state of this clock? So ultimately, between time being fundamental and not fundamental, you're kind of agnostic. I am agnostic, Which, which yes. is rare for you, actually. I know, yes. <laughs> usually I have very strong opinions, and I used to have a strong opinion. I used to think which, what it was fundamental. Think? Ah, okay. And because I didn't think that we could explain the arrow of time mm -hmm. if time was not fundamental. Okay. Now I'm more open-minded about that. Okay, so so you're moving in the, uh, in, in the conventional trend. Always willing to change my mind. Always very strong and fundamentalist about something, but uh -huh. right now I'm in between. Who knows where I'll end up a year from now.